Thank you very much, and good to be with you today for JAWS with Google Slides. And we know this has been one you wanted, and we're very glad to be able to present it to you today. So our time today, we're going to begin with our introductions and announcements. Uh, the Google Slides with JAWS presentation, which is going to include keyboard commands, uh, starting and stopping presentations, uh, enable screen reader support. Uh, we do have, as you know, ACVRIP credit eligible today. And of course, we do have uh, closed captioning. When the chat is open, feel free to use it. As you know, there may be times that it will not be, but uh, feel free to use it. APH and Vispero Solutions. Uh, we talked about our partnership on our webinar last night on new features in the software from Freedom Scientific. If you missed that, that one will be on YouTube soon. Uh, but our solutions include hardware and software. Uh, we have the Jupyter Video Magnifier. The Video Mag HD coming in 2021 will be the Juno Magnifier. And then, of course, we have ways where you can get JAWS, Zoom, Text, and Fusion. Uh, if you want more information on how that works, contact us at APH and we'll help you figure out what it is and how you can get what you're looking for. Before we get started, we want to talk a little bit about Computer Science Education Week because we have a couple of things that we're offering you uh, that are APH related. Uh, it is the 7th through the 13th of December. So we have two things going on. On our YouTube channel, there are five new Code Jumper lessons there with videos and also with accessible PDFs on our YouTube channel. You can also, on the Hour of Code website, which is something that is highly uh, talked about during this week, there is a presentation, best way to describe it to you, is an activity. It's an, what we call an unplugged activity. So you don't need a code jumper kit for it. Uh, it's for grades two through eight. It's called Networks Messages of Kindness. Uh, and so what you would do is you go to that Hour of Code website and you make a selection that says no computers or devices available. And you go down and look and you'll see the code jumper kit and pods and you'll hear a notification that mentions those as well. All right, our presenter, Elizabeth Whitaker, a technical writer from Vespero, uh, has done many of these for us and we're glad to have her back with us today. All right, let's get to our learning objectives here. So we're going to identify at least four keyboard commands for navigating Google Slides, two steps for enabling screen reader and Braille support, and you'll understand why you need both as we go through this, at least five keyboard commands for formatting your slides, two steps to stop and to start a presentation, at least five keyboard commands for opening and reading a presentation. So quite a bit here. So with that in mind, it's time to turn this over to Elizabeth. All right, thank you, Paul. And thank you, APH, once again, for having me here today. And thank all of you for taking time out of your day to be here. So we have a lot to cover today. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that. I'm gonna do some demonstrations for you, of course. I'll start out by giving you an overview of using Google Slides with JAWS. We'll talk about turning on accessibility settings for the Google Workspace applications. We'll explore the accessibility menu, navigate the menus and slides. I'll show you how to open and read a presentation, create and save a new presentation, insert and delete slides, add, edit, and format content on a slide, and then we'll go over some keyboard commands. So, and I'll be giving you a lot of those commands throughout this presentation. So we also have a handout that contains all of this information that Leanne mentioned earlier. And it kind of steps you through all of these things that I'm gonna be covering today and gives you that list of keyboard commands at the end. 
Okay, so let's talk about an overview of Google Slides and using it with JAWS. You can use, of course, Google Slides will work with different Windows-based browsers, web browsers such as Chrome and Firefox, and you may have different experiences when using different browsers. You can turn on screen reader and braille support, well, screen reader support for greater functionality, and I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. Use Windows keyboard commands to navigate the content in a presentation. So now let's move on to turning on the accessibility settings. I'm going to talk a little bit about what they are, and then I'm going to show you how to do them. But before I do that, for any of you who aren't familiar with navigating web pages with JAWS and, and may not be familiar with how to navigate around the initial home screen when you go to slides. So when you go to a web page on the internet, we have what is called the virtual PC cursor. So when you know when you're navigating around a regular document, say in Microsoft Word or Google Docs or any of those, you have an insertion point, you have a way of editing that text, that insertion point is your cursor, it moves with you. Um, you know, that's and then for JAWS, that's called the PC cursor. Well, on the internet, you know, you can't edit a web page, you, you don't have that insertion point but you need a way to navigate that page and read the contents. So we have that JAWS virtual PC cursor that allows you to do that. When you're accessing Google applications, um, you will, from the home screen, when you, when you go to, for example, slides.google.com, your virtual PC cursor is going to be on and that's fine. You can navigate that screen, that page with it on because you're going to use some web page commands. However, when you open a Google application such as slides or docs, the virtual PC cursor needs to be turned off so that you're using the PC cursor so that you have that insertion point, you have that cursor that you can use. By default, it usually turns off automatically, but if that doesn't happen, you can use insert and the letter Z, Zulu, to toggle the virtual PC cursor on or off. So once again, if that doesn't happen, just press insert Z. Now, one more thing to mention, because I'll be talking about this today, is I want to just briefly explain what forms mode is. So when you're navigating a web page, you have a way, we've, we've built a way to uh, navigate that quickly. So when you're navigating using your arrow keys and your tab keys, if you want to find something quickly, which we'll be doing some of that today, you can use what we call quick nav keys. And those are keyboard commands that have been built in that allow you to get to buttons or headings or tables quickly and, and other elements as well. So for example, you can press B for button, H for heading and so on. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of information there because then when you go into some of these, for example, combo boxes to choose or to open a presentation, that's going to activate forms mode. Forms mode turns off the virtual PC cursor, activates the PC cursor, and allows you to use those keyboard commands or, or those letters to type information, or you can navigate, you know, for example, a, a list box using your arrow keys. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background for anyone who might be new to JAWS and navigating a web page there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and share my screen here, and you're going to hear JAWS. Um, as well as you will see the screen. Web All right. Google Slides, you guys Google. see the screen? And here, Jaws? You can see it. Yes. Okay, great. Hear it. Google Slides. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here initially on the Google Slides page and I'm logged in. Now, if you have a Google account and you log in, you're probably, if you, if you stay logged in, when you go to slides.google.com, you will automatically be logged into that. So 
screen reader. I'm going to go ahead and we're, we're going to go into this here in a few minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and open a presentation so that we can turn on and I can show you why you need to turn on these things, uh, these two settings. Banner region, slides list, search region, search bar, at search bar, Google apps, Google account, FS trainer recently used list box, more actions, owner filter option, sort options, button today last opened by me list box. All right, so you have different ways of opening presentations, which we'll get to later, but Ever. I'm going to go ahead and today open. Last APH Gmail and Jaws. This old presentation. This was actually a PowerPoint presentation that I opened here. Enter. In slides. Main menu slide search Google Apps Google account. FS trainers trainers two. Okay. Screen reader. So it will tell me that screen reader. Screen reader support, support enabled. Slide two of thirteen tasks for today is enabled. So it told me that now. PC cursor. I can reach over here and and press the plus key on my numpad, and it will say PC cursor. So that tells me that the virtual PC cursor is off. But I'll go ahead and show you. You can press Insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor off. Actually, it was on. Okay, so you can press Insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor on to turn it on and off. Use virtual PC cursor off. Okay, so now that we've now that we have that out of the way, you can turn on or off the screen reader support by pressing alt control z alt control z and sometimes it doesn't announce alt control z. z screen reader support disabled so if you do that and it doesn't announce it you may have to press that again alt control z screen reader support enabled okay the other setting that Google has for a lot of their works well for all of their Google workspace applications is braille support now braille support is useful even if you aren't using a braille display because it gives you greater functionality in certain areas. For example, in docs, you can read tables uh, better with braille support on. The keyboard command to turn that on and off is Alt Control H. Alt Control H, braille support enabled, document content edit read only. Alt Control H, braille support disabled. And I'm gonna disable that. now. Here's the one difference. Okay, so for most of these applications in Google, you want to turn Braille support and screen reader support on. However, when you're in Google Slides, you want to toggle Braille support off when you're going to edit slides because if you don't, you won't be able to read the content. The, if, you, if you're editing a slide, which I'll show you this here in just a few minutes, when you're editing content on a slide, if you use your up and down arrow keys, you should be able to read that content. Well, if Braille support is turned on, if you press up arrow or down arrow, the cursor will move, but you, you won't hear anything. And I, I know that it moves because someone cited, you know, told me that it was actually moving. Otherwise, I would not have known that. So uh, I'm a JAWS user as well. Uh, by the way. So uh, yeah, so when we, we, we depend on that feedback. So you can toggle that off with Alt Control H. So another way to get to these settings is using accessibility settings in the tool, tools menu. You're going to press Alt T to get to the tools menu. Alt T menu tools 8 of 10 to okay. move through items. And then you're going to press C for accessibility settings. C. Leaving menus, accessibility settings, dialogue. And you can just press tab to move through these settings and then list with learn more about screen reader. Oops, Turn I on screen it. reader support checkbox checked. And that's checked. So that's good. And we'll tab to Braille support. Learn list with two items. Turn on Braille support checkbox not checked. Works with third party Braille hardware to check. And you can use the space bar to check or uncheck. And then turn on Turn on screen magnifier. You have support some check. other options. You can turn on collaboration so you know so you can collaborate with people. Um, learn more about learn more link cancel button okay button and yeah. then you just space on okay space frame about and you're back in your presentation so that's just another way to access that information i'm going to stop here and see if anybody meeting has any meeting. questions so far because i know i've co covered a lot of stuff in a short period of time and once again keep in mind you have this information in the handout document as well you'll be able to access that all this I have opened the chat back up for you to be able to type in any questions. Okay. And feel free to share your experiences as well. If you use Google Slides and you have, you know, some feedback you'd like to share, some experiences, definitely share that. I'd love to hear that. I'll wait a minute for people to think okay. if there's any questions. Sure. And yes, we are still working behind the scenes to get the handout link to work. Could you please say again, Elizabeth, if mm -hmm. the virtual, if virtual PC cursor on off, 
I'm not quite sure what the question is. Um, well, when you open a presentation or any other Google document, typically the virtual PC cursor turns off. Now, as you saw earlier, mine did not, but you can toggle it off with the keyboard command insert in the letter Z, Zulu. You can toggle it on and off with that keyboard command. Okay. How did you get to the menu you were on? I pressed Alt T to get to the menu. And I'll get into some of the navigation here in just a minute on the Google, the, the home screen here, but I pressed Alt T to get to the menu and then C for uh, accessibility settings. I will answer the question. The handout does not get mailed directly to you. It is a link to our OneDrive and our OneDrive is having accessibility issues right now for everyone. <laughs> so we are working on getting that fixed. Liz, how do you turn on the accessibility settings? Okay, Access yeah, the accessibility settings. So you can go to tools with Alt T, then press the letter C for accessibility settings, and then you can tab through that list and access various settings there. Or you can just turn on screen reader support with Alt Control Z. And then you can toggle Braille support on or off with Alt Control H. Question, if you turn Braille support off, will you be able to see the text on your Braille display? I, um, I could not, that, that's an excellent question. I could not when it was on or off. And I experienced this with, you know, I've, I've seen this happen in different browsers and with different screen readers. So um, we will definitely reach out to, to Google and, and uh, see what we can do about that. A person indicates they have a student who hasn't been able to edit and read at the same time. Is that caused by Braille support? Um, I'm not sure I understand the problem in terms of if the student is trying to arrow and, and read that information and then edit that information, then yes, I would say that could very well be caused by the Braille support being turned on. Can you explain where to find the Google setting options? Uh, well, within every Google application, there are settings. So if you go to, for example, slides, uh, let's see slides.google.com I'm there now there whoops there are some settings there on that page you can also uh, go into the menus there are well we'll cover that here in just a second so I'll show you where those are okay the control alt z toggle command does it work if you haven't turned on the braille reader support via the two tool menus first yes yes those two commands should work regardless um i just wanted to show you where else you could find that information so and also something else to mention about that once you turn it on for one google application it's on across all of them and it stays on until you turn it off Okay, I'm going to let you go on. I'm going to capture some of sure. these other ones. All right, so we're going to go on and we're going to talk a little bit more about accessibility. There's an accessibility menu uh, that we're going to talk about exploring. I'll just tell you a little bit about it first. The accessibility menu contains options for navigating and editing presentations. So you can format things like headings and tables and some other options. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again here. And oops. All right. Google Slides, Google. OK, are we sharing the screen? Does, is this working again? Working good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead General and presentation open a PhD mail and enter. presentation one Main more time. Menu slide search. And Frame, let document, that open. Content, edit. So when you're in a presentation. Screen reader support enabled. Slide one of 13 presenter all text description. Okay. So here we, we just got a lot of information there. It told us that the screen reader support was enabled. So from within uh, a presentation, you can press Alt and the letter A to get to the accessibility menu. Alta menu accessibility 10 of 10. And then you can down arrow through this menu 
Speak as submenu, one of seven. Go to film strip F, control plus alt plus shift plus F, two of seven. And we have a lot of options here, and I'll, I'll discuss the film strip here in just a few minutes. Go to canvas B, control plus alt plus shift plus C. Go to speaker notes and control plus alt plus shift. Comments C, submenu, five of seven. So here we have comments. Uh, we could, and that's a submenu. So when you're in a menu and you encounter a submenu, you can press the right arrow key to open that submenu. Speak, comment, C, control, plus alt. And then you can down arrow or up arrow through those options. Speak, and open, comment, history, O, control, plus alt, plus shift, plus A, three. Now you notice it's giving us keyboard commands. So like here it said, open, comment, history. Open, comment, history, O, control, plus alt, plus shift, plus A. It said control, alt, shift, A. But I could press enter here. Enter, leaving menus, comment, history, dialog. Slide one, slide two. Slide APHG mail and JAWS webinar presentation. And it didn't read Presenter that to me. I don't think there are any comments, but let's try that again. I'll press Alt and A. Alt menu. Go, to go speak down comment. to. Misspelling M sub comment C sub menu. Speak, speak open. Move to next comment. Move to speak comment C and speak and open comment enter. Leaving menus. Comment history dialog. Okay. For some reason, it's not telling me. I don't think there are Great. any comments. And I want to point out here that when you encounter things like this, for example, yesterday it told me that. It said there weren't any comments. Or if there were, it would list them. But when you encounter things like this, because sometimes these things do happen, you can close your browser, open it again, see if that fixes the problem. Or sometimes uh, sometimes you just have to try it again to get that information. So Escape. I know that's that frustrating normal? and may sound confusing as you're navigating through any application, but um, you know, just know that sometimes there are ways to troubleshoot those things. Alta so let's menu. go back to accessibility menu. Speak let's see. Go, go, comment C misspelling M sub menu six. So you can also go to misspelling here. We have move the next misspell move to move the next misspelling. And it gives you these keyboard commands if you want to move to the next misspelling. Move, move the next misspelling control plus apostrophe one of two. You can press control apostrophe. You can also move the previous misspelling control plus semicolon. Control semicolon. So. What you have here is a menu that also, or you can go to this menu to perform these tasks, or you can just use those keyboard commands in slides. You'll, you'll hear that in Microsoft Word and other applications as well. Um, but I just wanted to show you what you could find in this menu. Now, if you want to close a submenu, you press left arrow. Misspelling M submenu. And here we're back to the main menu here the main accessibility menu. Formatting O sub menu. Let's go to formatting. Move the next formatting change and move the previous formatting change P control plus alt plus P. Move the next. So you can you can move around to the different formatting changes. So that's just another way to navigate through your presentation um, quickly. So I'm going to press escape to get out of this menu. Move the previous escape leaving menus frame. And we're back here in the presentation. So once again alt and the letter A will open that menu and then you can down arrow through those choices. All right, so Meeting let's control. go back here and see if we have any questions or see if we want to move on to the next slide. Okay. See if you guys have any, any questions first though. I'll let those come in. So do you want the virtual PC cursor when editing a slide? Uh, no. When you're editing a slide, you want to use the PC cursor because it is actually the insertion point. It's actually the cursor that you see on the screen. The virtual PC cursor doesn't actually have an insertion point. So if you are a sighted person, you're looking uh, at a screen as a JAWS user navigates around it, you're going to see different things than what JAWS is reading quite possibly. I mean, the information is there, but it's not tracking as you know, you're going to be seeing something on the screen. JAWS might be in a completely different area and there's no insertion point there to track that. Okay. So that's why sometimes you get different information. But to answer your question, yes, PC cursor. So when you open the accessibility menu and then arrowed down, how did you open the sub menu? You press the right arrow key and then you can down arrow through those options. You can also press enter too if you wanted to. Okay. Can you add extra video or audio files to a slide? You can. You can add, we're going to talk about that here in a bit, you can okay. add um, content from an external source. So if you had something in Google Drive that you had saved, an image or video or audio file, you, you can do that. 
And another person is just confirming the comments feature is for others to insert comments on your slides. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So if that slide had comments, then it would have jumped to the comments. Okay. Can you have the JAWS settings center automatically to be set to enable screen reader support when entering a Google slide? Um, no, but if you if you activate that setting in any of the Google Workspace applications, it will it will remain on for all of them. Okay. And can you insert alt descriptions text? Absolutely. You sure can. Is the enter button discouraged because of its location on the keyboard? Are the control plus options easier for most JAWS users? I'm not sure I understand uh, which, which control plus options. I think they're wondering why you don't use the enter button as opposed oh, to the control you know. button. In a, in a menu or? I'm guessing as a keystroke command. As a keystroke command. Well, enter is used to choose, like to select a menu choice. You can use enter or you can use enter to, you can use it to do a number of things. You can use it to, uh, when you're going to edit a slide, you can use it to um, press enter on the title or the object to edit the slide content. In the Google Classroom, how do I access the accessibility menu in Google Slides? Um, you mean if you're, I'm assuming maybe if you mean you have a presentation from within Classroom, I would think that, and I, and someone please correct me on this if, if I'm wrong. Um, if you're accessing Google Slides from Google Classroom, then it's going to probably access, it's going to open slides. It'll open that presentation in slides. So you should be able to press Alt and the letter A for the accessibility menu. You can also do that in other Google applications as well. You still have that accessibility menu that you can get to with Alt A. And she says that answers the question. Okay, I'm gonna let you go on. Okay. All right, so we're gonna talk about navigating the menus. Now we talked about this just a little bit, but I wanna mention a couple of important things about this. So when you're in a presentation, and this is the case in other Google documents as well, if you're using Google Chrome, you can press Alt and the corresponding letter to access a menu. For example, Alt T for tools, Alt F for file and so forth. If you're in other browsers, you might have to press Alt Shift and the corresponding letter. So if you try, for example, Alt F and it doesn't work, try Alt Shift F for the file menu or alt shift t for the tools menu and so forth the reason for that when you're in a google application sometimes if you press alt f or alt t or whichever keyboard command there it accesses the corresponding menu for the browser so i found that sometimes it, when when that happens just press escape and try it again sometimes you may need to make sure that that virtual pc cursor is off in JAWS. So if it didn't turn off automatically and you're not, you're having trouble accessing those menu, menus, just press insert Z, toggle it off, and then try to access the menus again. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Start screen share to move to APHG mail and JAWS webinar. All right. Are you can you guys see We're and hear this? good. And when you okay. get a chance, we need a repeat on the toggling between the PC virtual cursor and the PC sure. cursor. OK, sure. Insert and the letter Z. In fact, I'll do that right now. Let's just make sure mine is off. Oh, let's see. Use virtual PC cursor off. And it was not. It was on. So if I press insert Z. Use virtual PC cursor on. On. I press it again. Use virtual PC cursor off. It's off. And we call those toggle command toggle commands because you use the same command to turn it on as you do to turn it off. OK, so one more. Th OK. Yeah, I'll go ahead and mention that. So typically, one more thing to note about using these menus before I show you. Typically, when you want to access a menu bar in an application such as a web browser or a Microsoft Office product, um, you press the Alt key and then you right and left arrow and you, you arrow through the file menu, insert menu and so forth. If you do that here, 
within a Google application, what you'll get is the browser menu bar. So what you want to do is go ahead and access a one of the menus here, a menu here, like I'll press Alt F for the file menu. Alt F menu file one of 10. Now, if I wanted to see what other menus were here, I could press the right arrow key. Edit two of 10, view three of 10, insert four of 10, format five, slide six, arrange set tools eight of 10, help nine of 10, accessibility 10 of 10. Or I can go back to the left. Help tools arrange slide format insert view edit file one. And I'm back at file. So that's how you access the menu bar. You actually access one of the menus and I just cho chose file because I know it's the first one. I pressed Alt F Foxtrot. And then I use the right and left arrow keys to navigate among the different menus. Because sometimes, you know, you, you might know, you know there's going to be a file menu there, but you might not know what your other options are. Okay, so if I press Alt F, it takes me here to the file menu, which now I can press the down, up and down arrow keys to navigate these menus. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now in the file menu. Share S, one of 20. We have share and it said S. What those commands mean, if it says a letter, if it says share S, what that means is you can press Alt F and then the letter S to share. New and black right pointing pointer sub menu. And that was really what that was trying to say. It, it gave you a little graphical representation there. But that's the new sub menu. Open O control plus O three. And that actually gave you, it said open O. So you could do Alt F and then the letter O to open. Or you could just press control O from within the presentation. Elizabeth, you're saying F as in Foxtrot, correct? F as in Foxtrot, correct. So that's how you navigate these menus. And then once again, I'll press escape. Escape, leaving menu. And then I'll press Alt F again. Alt F menu. And let's let's navigate to something that we know has a sub menu. Edit two of view three of ten. Insert four of ten. Image I black right text box T two. Oh. Format five of ten. Now I just pressed if you're down arrowing through a menu and you, you think no I don't think what I'm looking for is there. You can press right arrow to go to a different menu. Slide six of ten. Arrange seven tools eight of help nine accessibility. Let's just go back to this menu. Speak Once again, a lot of these are in sub menus, which means it's a menu within a menu. Go to film strip F control plus alt plus shift plus F two. Go to canvas V. Go to speaker notes and comments C black right pointing pointer sub menu. And to to enter a sub menu, you can just press the right arrow key, and then to get out of a sub menu, go back to the main menu, press the left arrow key. So that's just a little bit about menu navigation. Like I said, I know I just threw a whole bunch of information at you, but you can press escape to exit here. Escape, leaving menus, frame. But I think it's important to know how to get to those menus because, you know, if, if you're not sure how to find something, that's usually one of the first places you can look. All right, so let's Meeting see control. if you guys have any questions once again. I opened the chat pack back up while those are coming in. How are Google Slides different from regular or, or Microsoft Office PowerPoint slides? Well, um, you can do a lot of those same things. They have very similar features. The main difference is that you're accessing Google Slides on a web page. So the navigation is going to be a little bit different. Some of the terminology is going to be different. Uh, for example, you know, you, you have the film strip where you uh, access all of the slides. We're going to talk about that in a minute, where you access all of the slides, a list of slides in Google Slides. And, and that's called something different in, in PowerPoint. So, but they're very, very similar and they do the same thing. Okay. What is the difference between the accessibility? menus by pressing alt a versus alt t c excellent excellent question so the accessibility menu gives you options for quickly navigating to certain things like comments uh, different formatting changes that have occurred uh, spelling errors things like that the accessibility settings that you get to when you press alt t and then the letter c allow you to toggle the uh, screen reader support, braille support on and off, um, check the box for collaborating with others, uh, and, and has a few other settings in there as well. One of your very first question times asked, do you have to be in a new presentation or have a presentation open to use the short 
cut keys like Alt plus Control Z? Um, yes, let's see. Let's see what happens if I use it. I, I want to say the answer to that is yes, you do. Okay. Someone is wondering if they're supposed to be able to access these menus on the slides main page. For some reason, they're only able to access them from opening a presentation. Yes, that, that is correct. Yes. So they're supposed to be in a presentation. To in a that. presentation. Yes. Okay. And the same is true for accessing the menu bar. So if you're on the main page and you have it open to presentation or created a new one and you want to access the menus, you actually have to be inside a presentation to do that. Okay. Um, someone's wondering how you start a new presentation. Ah, oh, we will get to that here in j just, let's see, I think a couple slides from here. Oh, see, they're, they're, they're building, they're, but you're building up yeah. well. Okay, I'm going to turn it back over yeah. to you. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about opening a presentation and navigating it. And I want to cover that first because, you know, when you, you, you might get a presentation that you need to read versus you know, you might not need to create one just yet, or maybe you get a lot of presentations through, you know, work or school and you need to be able to access those. You can open a presentation from the main slides screen, or you can open a presentation from within a presentation. I'm going to show you both ways to do that. When you open a presentation, the title slide is in focus. So that's the first slide that you'll see if there is one, which usually there is. You can also sometimes when you, okay, so when you go to the uh, Google Slides main screen, you can have, you can filter out a lot of options, but you have an option for recent files. You also have, you know, last opened today or last week or whatever. So. I'm going to share my screen now and I'm going to show you how to open from that screen. All right. Google Slides, Google. All right. Can you guys see in here? Sounds good. On here? Okay. So virtual PC when we're on this main screen, once again, the virtual PC cursor is on and that's fine because you're navigating it like a web page. You can turn it off if you choose and tab through these choices, but it does take a while to tab through the choices, but you could do that if you wanted to. Google's I'm going to go ahead and use, you know, I talked earlier about JAWS quick nav keys. Quick navigation keys allow you to get places quickly on a web page. So I know that there is a list box or combo box that I need to get to that's going to show me slides that I have opened uh, recently. So I'm going to press the letter C for that. Search bar edit combo. Recently used list bar. More action. And that's not recently used actually gives you some uh, different formatting th or template things there. Owner filter options, sort options, button meant the day last opened by me list box. Okay, so that's a list box and I'm, I'm going to, we're going to open it from there for just a second, but I'm going to skip past this and show you something else quickly here. Previous seven days. So this is set to show me files that have been opened uh it starts with today and then it goes back really list earlier so open open file picker button now there's a button down here that says open file picker if i didn't want to use recent items i could use the open file picker button which would open my google drive folders and files and i could choose a presentation from there so if i pressed enter on it enter open the file dialog I have, and you heard that little pop noise, that turns on forms mode so that we can use the PC cursor now to navigate with arrow keys. User and projects shared. And I could down arrow through these folders and files. General presentation. And I could enter and choose a, a presentation. I'm not going to do it that way though. You can press escape to get out of that. Escape, Google Slides. And let's go open. back up to where we were with this uh, last opened presentations. I'm gonna press Shift C, which is the opposite of C, because C navigates me through a web page, and in particular this web page right now, uh, forward through these different list boxes. But if I press Shift C, that's going to 
do the opposite, it's going to bring me backward through them. So sort options button menu, the collapse previous. menu, owner filter option, search bar, edit com, owner fit, sort options. Well, that didn't work, so let's try C. Wrapping the top, search bar, recently, more action, owner filter, sort options, the day last opened by me. List. I have found sometimes on this page that items are skipped over and I'm not sure what exactly goes on there. So that's another troubleshooting thing to keep in mind. Uh, I pressed shift C and it was it was going back to things I had already passed. So I just pressed C to get back to those, to, to scroll back through those different combo boxes. So I'm going to press enter to turn forms mode on here. Enter the day last opened by me list box. Now, sometimes when you go to a web page, you'll notice it will, focus will jump to the first form. And in this case, if you go to slides.google.com, it might go ahead and jump into that recently opened box for you. So a lot of times that happens for me in various Google applications. So you may encounter that. All right, so I've pressed enter, forms mode is activated. Now I can arrow through the presentations. Today last open, general present, APH Gmail and JAWS webinar presentation rev two. So I wanna go ahead and use this. Like I said, this is a previous presentation that we used for one of our uh, webinars here with APH. And it was imported from PowerPoint, but it reads very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter here. Enter. We're going to create a main menu here in a few slide minutes. search Google apps. All right, so frame document content edit type and text screen reader support enabled screen reader support enabled. All right, so we know that screen reader support is enabled. Let's see if our virtual PC cursor turned off. Use virtual PC cursor off. It did not. So most of the time, like a lot of people have have said that yes, theirs turns off, and then sometimes they do not. It does not. So you just press that insert Z to turn it off. All right, so I just threw, blew through a lot of information there once again, but let's talk a little bit about navigating uh, the presentation. Oh, wait, before we get to that, I want to show you another way. So I'm in this presentation, but if I wanted to open another presentation, I could press Control O from within. You have to be with from within a presentation to do this. Press Control O. Control O, open the file dialog to navigate use tab, frame, files and folders, grid view, extended select User ed and here I am back on Google Drive and I could just down arrow through this, the files and folders and press enter on what I want to open. So I'll press escape. Escape frame. About and that may be a very familiar command to you if you use a lot of, uh, you know, Microsoft Office or other applications that use 12, 16, that same light. information or the same keyboard command. Okay, so now we're in a presentation. I just want to go over a couple of navigation things here. I like to, now this is personal preference. So when you're in a presentation, you can navigate through slides. You can, if I press page down, that's gonna bring me to the next slide. Page down, slide three, overview of Gmail and JAWS. If I press page up. Page up, slide two, tasks for today. It brings me to the previous slide. Now, just like in PowerPoint, you can tab around here to the, when you're on a slide, you can tab the different areas. Tasks for today, title selected. So that's the title of that's the, the title area if I tabbed again all text description picture of check mark check mark color matches color used in other slides image selected and there you just got a little bit of alt text because there's a picture there custom bullet overview of gmail and jaws custom bullet basic html vs standard view custom bullet and it would just keep reading that if I let it now um Another quick way, if you wanted to see all the slides that were in a presentation, a quick way to get there is Alt, uh, I'm sorry, Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter F as in Foxtrot. And I know that's kind of a difficult, maybe a difficult uh, keyboard command, so a lot of keys there. Um, I like to use the Alt, Control, Shift on the left side. That's just my personal preference to the left of the space bar because I can put one finger on the Control and Shift and press them down with the Alt and press F as in Foxtrot. Alt, Control, Shift, F, Film, Stroke, Slide 2 of 13 tasks for today, custom bullet overview. All right, so now what we have is a list of slides. I can up and down arrow through them. Slide 1 of 13, Slide 2 of 13 tasks for today, custom. Slide 3 of 13, overview of Gmail and JAWS. Slide 4 of 13, basic HTML VS standard view custom. So there we have it. We can just arrow through those different slides. So we'll be doing some more things from that here in just a second. But that's where the, the film strip is where all your slides are located. All right, Elizabeth, so, uh -huh. as a visual user, that is where a majority of visual users spend their time for navigation. Oh, that makes so can sense. Can you give me that? that keystroke command to get over there and then to get out of there. 
Okay, so control alt. I'm sorry, my home device over here thought I was talking to it and it just spoke. So um, sorry about that. To get to the film strip, you press alt control shift and the letter F as in Foxtrot. And then from there, you can get back to the slide canvas. You can press alt control shift C. Alt control shift C canvas. And that moves you back over to the canvas. Slide five. But Slide I can still navigate here through these these uh, slides, so I'm not really sure that navigated me away from the film strip itself. Uh, but you can press Alt Control Shift F. Alt Control Shift F. Film strip slide four. And you're on the film strip. If I want to go to a slide. Slide five of thirteen. Access Gmail settings with JAWS. Let's let's say I wanted to do that. If I press Tab right here. Rectangle selected. It's going to navigate me through the areas of this slide. Custom selected. Access Gmail settings with JAWS title selected. And if I wanted to read... Arc selected. Let's, let's get over here to the information Custom on the slide. Access G if I want to read that information here, I can press enter. I could press enter on the title, or I could press enter on the uh, object's information here. But I'm going to press enter. Enter. Custom bullet access Gmail. And that turns on selection mode. So once you turn on selection mode, you can read and navigate slides using your standard navigation commands here. I can use my up and down arrow keys. Um, and I'm going to do that right now. Let's see. Custom bullet access Gmail settings to customize email preferences. Custom bullet choose a category. Or I can use down arrow. Preferences. Custom bullet choose a category such as general inbox or Labels. And I can just, I can navigate by word with control right arrow. New line, custom bullet save, your settings, after making. Or just use right arrow to go by character. F -A -K -I -N. So that's also, we'll, we'll talk about editing a little later, but that's also how you can edit. So that's a good way to read the information on the slide. So then when you press escape, you will exit selection mode. Escape, exit a text selection, custom bullet. Act. And then if I want to go back to the film strip, I know I can press control. Alt Control Shift F. Alt Control Shift F. Film strip slide five of thirteen. And it tells you where you are, uh, slide five of thirteen, and so forth. So, Elizabeth, before you move on, one of the yes. things that you demonstrated to us visually is moving through the different elements of this slide, two mm -hmm. of which were graphic and had no description whatsoever, right. and two which had words. And so that was why you were navigating and why we saw an outline of those two graphical pieces, and you just skipped mm -hmm. over them because they were meaningless for the slide for sure. you. Sure. As I was just giving that explanation. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for, for pointing that out. And I also want to show you, I meant to do this a second ago. Let me, let's go back to custom select access G arc selected custom bullet access. Now let's press enter to turn on selection enter, mode. Let me turn on braille support. I just want to demonstrate what happens here. Alt control H braille support enabled. All right. So now I can press up and down arrow keys. I get absolutely no feedback. I can press right arrow. I get nothing. But if I turn off Braille support with Alt Control H. Alt Control H. Braille support disabled. I can up and down arrow. References. Custom bullet labels. I can control right. You know. New lock, custom your Set it after. Make it change. So I can navigate there. So if you are reading a presentation and you encounter that and you can't read that text, just press Alt Control H. All right. Escape. So I'm going to press escape. One more thing to mention. If you, if you have a presentation and you want to read it, you can use slide, uh, not slideshow mode, a presenter mode. It's a little bit different here uh, since it's web-based. You're going to press Control F5. Control F alert. Press escape to exit full screen. Now I told you to press escape to exit full screen. But so I pressed Control F5 to enter presentation mode and I can tab through here and um, Listen to, let's see what we have here. Previous left word zero button to activate. Press. We can go to the previous slide. Play button to activate. Uh, that really, that could. Next right word zero button okay, to next. activate. How did you get to that menu, Elizabeth, to tab I, through it? I pressed control F5. Okay. Next right control F5 will bring you to this pre presentation. List box collapsed as pop-up. Slide five, five of 13. Cop button, open up, notes button, open speaker, notes S. And here, it's a little tricky to navigate through because here you have uh, all these different things. Whereas, you know, for example, in PowerPoint, you can just press F5 and you can up and down arrow through a slide to read that information. It works differently here 
uh, in an online situation. Pointer button, tur captions, toggle button, captions, prep tips button, keyboard, exit, full screen. Can so I'm going to tap there because there's something I'm trying to find that I want to show you. Options button, met, exit button, stop, slide 5 of 13, access G graphic, access Gmail settings with JAWS graphic. Custom bullet access Gmail settings to customize email preferences. Custom bullet choose a category such as general inbox or labels. Custom bullet. Now it's just going to read straight through that information. Um, if I were to press up and down arrow, I'll show you what happens. If I press up arrow. APH Gmail and JAWS webinar presentation rev 2pptx Google Slides. Page change slide 4 of 3. That's slide 4. If I press down arrow. Page change slide 5. That's slide 5. So you press up and down arrow to go to previous and next. So reading a presentation, if, if, if you just really want to be able to read it, you know, you, you can use the presentation mode, but you might get more out of it if you, let's exit presentation mode, escape. press escape. APH Gmail. If you tab around these slide areas and press enter on a particular object to read that information, like I just displayed earlier. I know that's confusing, but I wanted to point that out as, um, uh, the pre presenter mode can be a little bit confusing here in this online uh, environment here. But you can tab through that information and, and it will actually read those bullet points to you. It's just going to read them all at once. So once again, you press Control F5 to enter presentation mode and you press Escape to exit. So now let's see if you guys have any questions. All day. And I opened it back up for questions. Elizabeth, I have a question. Uh -huh. You are in presentation mode if I am a student or an adult and uh -huh. have a presentation on Google Slides and I need to present it. What right. would be your suggestion for presenting, but also knowing what slide I'm on and being able to read it? Would you suggest two devices, having a refreshable Braille display? Would it give you the words? What would you suggest? I would suggest, and, and I'm still working with this, like I said, if any of you have experienced something different here, please let me know. Um, when I tried it earlier, I was not able to read that information. Um, I could read some of it with the Braille display, but I'm not sure I was getting to all of it. But you could try, yes, using the Braille display. And, and obviously, if you're if you're actually presenting to someone, you, you probably want to use a Braille display, or you might have an, you know, earpiece with with jaws you know coming through it so that you could hear it but um yeah you and you or you could use a, an additional device you can have your notes in braille or something like that to to read them as you're presenting okay can which is what i do over, either. yeah i was gonna say yeah I was gonna, can you go <laughs> yeah. over again quickly when not in presenter mode how were you reading through the information in the slide line by line word by sure. word Okay, so when you're on a slide, when you open a presentation, I personally, I really like that film strip because it lets me navigate to see what those slides are. So you press Alt, Control, Shift, and the letter F as in Frank or Foxtrot. And that brings you to the film strip and you can up and down arrow through those slides. So you get to hear what is slide one, what is slide two, what's on slide three. It reads the titles of those slides to you. When you get to one that you want to actually read the content of, you press the tab key and that's going to take you through the different areas of the slide. So you'll have the title to read that to you. Um, it will, you know, it read that we had some images It read the alt text for those that had it. And then when you get to where it says, you know, that it starts reading the actual content of the slide, you can press enter. You can do this on the title as well. You can press enter. To, to turn on selection mode, that enter selection mode. And from there, you can use your, your navigation commands, that the commands you use in any document to read a slide. So up and down arrow takes you up and down a line at a time. You can read by word with control right arrow or previous word control left arrow. And you can navigate by character with your right and left arrow keys. So that's a way you can read and edit that slide content. When you're finished, press escape, that exits selection mode and brings you back to where you were. And if you wanna make sure you're back on the film strip, you can just press that alt control shift F as in Foxtrot again.
Okay, at the moment I'm not seeing any. Um, I will want to uh, reiterate how important titles are. You just described moving titles to navigate that film strip and I'm going to put the plug for reminding you to remind your educators and people that uh, titles with the same title are not helpful. So if you can make two slides that are carrying the same information, writing one of two and two of two or continued or something so that there's definitely a difference between your titles. Okay, back to you, Elizabeth. All right, so now let's talk about creating and saving presentation. I'm also going to show you something extra here about uh, deleting presentations here in a bit. I, I did not have that on this uh, PowerPoint, but if we have time, I definitely want to show you that. You can create a presentation from the main screen or from within a presentation. So you can choose a template or use a blank. I, I usually use blank presentations, but there are some interesting templates that you can choose. When, when you create a new presentation, it gives it the name of untitled presentation. So you can use the rename function to give that a title. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And your presentations are automatically saved just as other Google documents are in other applications. They're automatically saved as you add content. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. All right, so let me share once again here. Meeting start screen share to move to a meeting control right. to move to start Google Slides, Google Chrome. There we go. Today last opened by me. General virtual. Okay, are we? Can you see and hear everything here? Are we good? See and hear good. Okay. Now, what happened when I went back over to this page is it did place me in that box for uh, last open presentations. I got out of that. You can press escape or you can press the plus on the numpad. And if you press that, then it'll say virtual PC cursor, which is where I want to be. So I'm going to navigate to the top of this page by pressing uh, control home. Google Slides. All right, so here's another tricky little thing I learned here. Now I'm going to press the tab key because I'm looking for a create new presentation button. Google Slides, Slides link, search re search button, Google Apps button, Google account, recently used template gap, more action, owner filter, grid view, button. sort option, open, today last, today last, more action, previous, earlier, create new presentation button. Okay, now I'm going to press space on that or enter. I can press the space bar. Space. Choose template dialog. Okay, now let me stop for just a second and explain something. Those of you who use JAWS may be asking, you know, why didn't you just use the commands on a web page to find that button? So, for example, when you're on a web page, you can press the letter B um, to locate the buttons on a page. You can also, you have a, a couple of other commands. Those are your quick nav commands I've been talking about. Um, you can also use insert F5 to uh, bring up a list of form fields that are on the page and it'll list all your buttons, your edit boxes and so forth, or insert F3 for HTML features. And from there you could choose buttons. You know, so there, there are a lot of different ways to get lists of things on web pages. All right, so the reason I didn't use any of those, the reason I did not is because this particular button does not actually show up in those lists. So if I were to press the letter B on that page, and I've, I've had this happen in different browsers, so it's not just a Chrome thing. If, if I go to the top of that page and I were to press the letter B, ideally what I would want to happen was I would want to be able to find that button and press space or enter on it. However, for some reason, JAWS skips over that button. So I have to get there by pressing tab. So I just wanted to explain that just in case, you know, students or any of you out there who are saying, well, why can't I just find it with the letter B or with any of these other commands for navigating web pages? That's why. Okay, so I found that button. I press space. Now I have some templates I can choose from. Um, so I'm going to. Recently used. General. Oops. Blank. I want blank. Okay, so I'll press enter on blank. Enter. To change the selection, press up or down arrow. Screen reader support enabled. Themes region. Simple light radio button not checked. Okay, so it gives me choices about do I want a theme 
to change the, to change the selection, uh, press up or see. down arrow. Streamline radio button not checked. 3 of 23. I don't know what I want, so I'm just going to go back dark. to the, I'm going to press. To change the, enter. enter. Frame about blank. Apply theme. Simple dark. And I have no idea what that's Title going to look like. Untitled presentation. Google slides. Google Chrome. Beautiful okay. black background with white uh, text. All right. So we have a new presentation. I can press insert in the letter T. That is a JAWS command. Um, if you're using a laptop and you have it set to laptop keyboard mode or laptop keyboard, you press caps lock T. Title is untitled presentation Google Slides Google Chrome. So that reads the window title, which actually also includes the title of your presentation. So there's, there's a new presentation. Now we'll talk about adding content here in just a minute. If I wanted to create another presentation from within one from within an open one, which you know, I don't, but if I did, or if I just you know wanted to create a new presentation and didn't want to go back to the main screen, I could press the letter. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I could press the keyboard command Alt F to get to File. Alt F Menu File One. New for Sub Menu. And Presentation One. And I could enter on Presentation, and we would get the same result. So I'm going to go ahead and press Escape. Escape, leaving menus. Free. Get back to the presentation. Now, I want to give this presentation a name. So we're going to rename it. So I'm going to press Alt F as in Foxtrot to go to the file menu. Alt F menu. And I'm going to press R, Romeo, for rename. R, leaving menus, untitled presentation, rename edit. And I'm going to type, um, let's see. V I R V. F E A T R E S O F J A W S. I'll type features of JAWS and I'll press enter. Enter frame. All right, so let's see if our presentation was renamed. I'll press insert T again. Title is features of JAWS, Google Slides, Google Chrome. And there we have it. All right, let's see if anybody Meeting has control. any questions here. All dead. We go on to the next. Okay, chat is opened back up. Did have someone ask if they can save their Google Slides and move them to PowerPoint to present from PowerPoint. I did state that you can import mm -hmm. between the platforms. Do realize graphics and items move around on the slides depending on which direction you go. So you would want to check that. Definitely, yes. I'll give it a minute. People thinking of their questions to come in. Absolutely. What was the keystroke command to rename a file again? Alt and the letter F as in Foxtrot, which takes you to the file menu. Press the letter R, Romeo, to go to rename. And then you will be placed in a field to type a new name and then press enter. OK. In Drive, you can press C to create a, a new something. Can you use the C? Charlie key to create a new presentation on that page where you, when you use tab? I'm pretty sure that you can, you know, like anything else, there's usually multiple ways to do it. And, you know, just like, I think you can do that. And also one thing you can do is you can access uh, slides from there. There's a drop down list box where you can choose drive docs, you know, any of the Google applications there. And what was the name of the button to open a presentation? There is one that says open file picker. And that that button will open, it'll open up your Google Drive folders and files. Okay, I'm not seeing any others right okay. now. All right, let's go into inserting and deleting slides. So from anywhere, you can press Control and the letter M, as in Mary, to insert a new slide. So just press that from anywhere in the presentation, and, and it'll insert that slide. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You can also press Delete on a slide from within the film strip to delete a slide. So I'm going to show you that as well. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Webinar features of JAWS, Google. Okay, are we back in? Can you see and hear it? Yep. You're okay. good. Features of JAWS. So
So I, these are going to be untitled slides, but I'm just going to press control M a couple times here. So we have some slides. Control M, inserted slide and index two with layout title and body. All right, press it again. Control M, inserted slide and index three with layout title and body. Control M, inserted slide and index four with layout title and body. So that's how you insert a slide. Now I can press Alt Control Shift F to go to the film strip. Alt Control Shift F. Slide three of four, slide two of, slide one of four layout titles. And we, these are unlabeled, but I can press uh, up and down arrow to navigate through those slides. Now, if I want to insert a slide after a particular slide, so I want to insert something between slides three and four. Slide, slide three or four. I go to the slide above the one where I want the new one to be. So I go to slide three and I can press either control M or I can even press enter, which I'll do. Enter, inserted slide and index four with layout title. So now we have five, slide five slides of there. And if I want to delete that slide, once again in the film strip, which you get to with alt control shift and the letter F Foxtrot, I go to the slide I want to delete. Slide four or five. And I just press the delete key. Blank, deleted slide four. And it actually tells me which slide it deleted. And then I can verify this with up and down arrows. Slide three, slide four. So that is how you insert and delete slides. And, and uh, once again, you navigate to that film strip with Alt, Control, Shift, F, as in Foxtrot. All right, so do we want to take more control. questions Meet here? We well, to... before you leave that, yes. um, will you be talking about how to add different types of slides? That's just the traditional slide right. that's used for body information. Yes. Um, not in this presentation because there's so much to cover, but you can, I know you can do that. Okay, that's okay. Um, I was just checking. Yes, yes. Okay, I'll look to see if there's any other questions. Okay. And it is interesting. It is, it's a really interesting to learn about those different types of slides and when you use them and uh, how you use them. So that is a good question. I'm not quite sure, but someone I think wants to know a little bit more about delete. What was deleting? Oh, deleting. Okay, so to delete a slide, and there are multiple ways to do this, but I like to go to that film strip with Alt Control Shift F Foxtrot, and then arrow to the slide. Use my up and down arrow keys. Arrow to the slide I want to delete, and then just press the delete key. When you arrow down the slides. Are you immediately told the title or did you have to press a command to, to hear the title for each slide in the film strip? You're automatically told the title. Can you undo delete? I Let's see. I'm pretty sure that you can. Let me try that. I'll press control Z. Yes, you can. Okay, control Z worked. Those magic buttons. Yeah, I love those, aren't they great? If you accidentally delete something you didn't mean to. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing any others, so you can okay. move on. All right, we're going to add a little bit of content to this slide. Um, once again, you can press enter on the title or object in a slide to enter selection mode, and you can, you know, add some content. You can type that, or you can press, uh, well, you can press escape to exit selection mode. You can also use the search function to locate and insert content such as text boxes or tables or things of that nature. So I'm going to show you how to get to that and you can, it's a, it's a great keyboard command here. So let me share, let's see. Oops. Features of JAWS. All right, so can you see, are we, are we back? Slide four or five. You're good. Slide one. Of okay. So we're going to add to slide one. I, what I've done here, I'm, I'm in the film strip and I've up arrowed to slide one and I'm going to tab. Center title selected. And I want to enter here because I want to give it a title. So I want to enter selection mode. I'm going to press enter. Enter, enter text selection. And it said enter text selection. So I'm going to type in. Uh, J A W S F E A T R E S. All right, typed in JAWS features. JAWS features. I can press up arrow, I can read that. I'm gonna hit escape, because if I were to tab here, it would not bring me 
First line indented. See, it would indent. It would enter a tab stop. I'm going to hit backspace. Left alignment applied. And that's good information there. It tells you the first line's indented or left alignment applied. That's excellent information there. But to get out of selection mode so I can move on to the next slide and enter something, I'm going to hit escape. Escape, exit, text, selection, JAWS, feature, center, title, selected. So I'm just going to go ahead here just for the sake of time. I'm going to press tab. Subtitle selected. Uh, I'm not going not gonna to do a subtitle. Let me go back to the film strip. Alt, control, shift, F. Alt, control, shift, F. Film. I could have also pressed page down, but. Slide two of five layout. I just like doing this. So down arrow to slide two. I'm going to tab. Title selected. And I'm going to enter here. And enter, enter. Give this a title. And I'm going to type in the name of a new JAWS feature in the 2021 release. V O I C E. Actually, it's in all of our software. Voice Space. Assistant. A S T A S T. -A -S -T. Right. So I'm going to hit Escape. Escape. Exit. Text, text. Selection. Voice Assistant. We have Voice Assistant. Now I'm going to tab. Body selected. This is the body area. I'm going to press Enter. 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 Text selection. And I'm going to go ahead and type a few things about Voice Assistant here. Um, C A L E D space. C W A E space O R D S S A A R A Y space N J A W S A S F U I O N enter W A E space O R D S space Z O O M Y I I space I N space Z O O M T E X A N S F U I O N. All right, I made a mistake. So now I want to go back up, and I want to remove something here. I, I made a mistake, so I want to take out some words. And fusion new line and zoom text and fusion and zoom text and wait wait word is Sharky and Jaws. Wait, word is zoom and zoom text and fusion. Right. Okay. So now we have some content here. So that you can edit slides, you can add content just like you would in other applications. Now, if I wanted to add some other content to that, I'm going to press escape. Escape. Exit. Let's do this command, this alt slash. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alt slash menu. Search the menus. Alt plus slash edit combo to move through items. Press up or down arrow. Leaving menus. Themes. Whoops. Uh, alt slash menu. Search. Slides help page. Search the menu result. All right, so I want to search. Enter. Slide search the menu result plus slash. Search the menu result okay. plus. So I'm going to type insert. I S E R E. Insert word art not checked. Insert word art not checked. And I just went ahead. I, I did alt slash and then it, it lands you on search the menus. I typed insert and now I have some options. I can just down arrow here. Insert text box. Insert audio. Insert video. So there's your insert audio, insert video. We could insert a text box. Insert special characters. Insert link control plus K. Upload and insert image. Insert image from web. Insert image from drive. Insert image from photos. So you have lots of options here. All right. So I don't want to do those any, any of those things right now, but I, I could if I wanted to. So I'm going to press escape to get out of that. But that's how you can insert some information on your slide. Escape, leaving menus. Uh, text boxes and images and things. All right, so now that we've uh, given a little bit of information here, you can like, you know, insert, like I said earlier, things from Google Drive and other sources. So let's take a couple of questions switching, meeting, before we talk about editing. We're, we're going to do a couple more things here. Okay. Let's see if you guys have any questions. I'll wait one minute. Chat is open. Do you have to use a text box to enter text? No, you do not. How can you review the insert menu? How did you get to it? What was it for? Well, I pressed the alt slash to get to that function. Uh, the search function and I typed what I was looking for and then you can down arrow through those choices and that gave me options there uh, of what I could insert. Okay. Does the text box draw a box around the text or why would you use a text box? That's an excellent question. Um, In different situations, JAWS doesn't necessarily read text boxes. I believe that it is more of a graphical representation with text in it. Um, so I think it's a visual thing. Maybe it also helps uh, uh, 
like pinpoint information if you want someone to be able to see that information. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't, <laughs> I don't use them. Uh, we have one person that says you use a text box so you can move around move the text around the screen oh. and it keeps the print in a certain area visually right so it definitely gives more information for a visual user that's yeah more emphasis is what i was trying to say and i could think of the word okay right elizabeth's slides were different because the first one was a title screen and the rest were content screens which are often used with just a title and then word content information um, other options might have been a section header sometimes two content comparisons pictures and captions title only and blank so those are different things built into both PowerPoint and Google Slides as types of slides. Hers was just two, a title slide and then title and content slide. Right. Yeah, I didn't do anything fancy with this one, but. How did you insert that blank slide again? Um, I, you can press Control M from anywhere, or if you're on the film strip, if you're on the slide above where you want to insert a blank slide, you press Enter. If I accidentally, oh, accidentally, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it. If okay. I accidentally press an arrow key while on the title or body area, body text area, when not editing the content will, within, will it nudge or move the content around? Yes. Yes. And so if you press down arrow and then you, you know, you didn't mean to move it, you just, you can press up arrow. That might, I'm not exactly sure if that will fix it, but that might fix it. Pressing control M for anywhere in a presentation will insert a slide where you are. Yes. How do you spell check on a slide or are you moving there? Uh, but I there, bet that find feature would work really well. It would. And also you can use that accessibility menu and there's a, it'll, there's a spelling error submenu and you can move through your spelling errors uh, previous or next. And that's an easy way to find them. I know there's another way to spell check, but I don't think we have time to. I'm going to let that. you move on because we've got 10 minutes left. Okay. So let me get, we're going to talk about, now I've already told you guys how to edit. So we're going to talk about formatting a slide. And I'm just going to show you something really quickly on doing that. Um, let's see. for the sake of time here. Control. So, features right, of are, Google we, slides. are we back inside? You're this inside you your it? features of JAWS presentation. Selected. Okay, so you can see that. Wait, word is Sharky and JAWS. All Wait, right, word is so we know how to edit. I can tab to where we have the information in this slide and press enter in the body enter. here. Wait, word. And I can edit that. I can use my up and down arrow keys. Wait, word is Sharky and JAWS. Wait, word is Zoomy and Zoom. Wait, word, Wait, word is Sharky and JAWS. Wait, word is Zoomy and Zoom text and fusion. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make this a bulleted list. I could select, I could press control A. Wait, word is Sharky and JAWS. Wait, word is Zoomy and Zoomed. Or I could, I could also press shift down arrow to select a line at a time. But I want to go to the format menu with alt O. Alt O, menu, format. Five. And I'm going to down arrow here through this menu. Text as black right point, align and indent a black right point in line spacing L black right point. So we have line spacing, we can indent. Bullets and numbering T black right point in pointer sub menu. I want bullets and numbering. We're going to create a bulleted list here. So I'm going to press right arrow because it's a sub menu. Numbered list and black. And. Bulleted list B black right point in pointer. I'm going to press enter on bulleted list. Enter one of one. So now I can down arrow here and select what kind of bullets I want. Row two, column one, arrow type row one, column one. Bullet hollow square. I want a hollow square one or an arrow. Row two, column one, arrow diamond bullet. A arrow. Okay, so I'm, I want this. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Enter. Leaving menus. Frame. Arrow bullet weight word is sharky and jaws. Arrow bullet weight word is zoomy and zoom text and fusion unselected. And now we have. Arrow bullet weight word is zoomy and zoom text. We have text with bullets in front of it. So what else can you do in that menu? I'm going to press alt again. Alt and just kind of go through that quickly. Text as sub menu. Align and indent as sub. You can align and, and indent. Line spacing L sub. Bullets and numbering T sub menu. Bullets and numbering. Clear formatting C control plus backslash. And you could use that to clear all formatting. Borders and lines Q sub menu. Borders and lines. Format options. Text as sub menu. And there we have it. So there's just a little bit of uh, just kind of give you a little bit of information about how to format a slide. So I'm going to press escape. Escape, escape, leaving. 
and Meet and controls to move. let's go ahead real quick to the Hold last that. slide if you don't mind paul and uh, just talk about a couple of keyboard commands and then i want to take your questions for the rest of the time so just to recap a few commands here there are there are more listed but just to recap a few you can toggle the virtual pc cursor on and off with the keyboard command insert z zulu if you're using a laptop and it's set to laptop keyboard layout it's caps lock z screen reader support it's the same whether you're using desktop keyboard or laptop um, you toggle screen reader support on and off with control alt z uh, braille support is control alt h open a presentation within an existing presentation is control o just like in a lot of other applications and then navigating to that film strip is control alt shift and the letter f so we actually and, and presenter mode is control f5 so we had a few more listed there um, just to let you know you can use certain keyboard commands like control b to bold text control i control u some of the commands that you're used to using in you know microsoft word and other applications so i'm going to open this back up for questions here and see what you guys want to know oh one more one more control slash uh is a keyboard command that will give you all of the available keyboard commands in that application and it works in all of the google applications across the board so if you want to know what keyboard commands are available press control slash and you can either search if you're looking for a particular command or you can down arrow through those options. Now, when you're in that dialog, you want to turn your virtual PC cursor back on because that's going to be displayed in a table and you won't be able to read it if the, the PC cursor is on. So control slash and then press insert Z to turn virtual PC cursor back on and then escape to exit that. And once again, that information is all in the handout. So. And I will reiterate, we will work very hard on getting access to both the handout and the presentation to all of you. Uh, look for a follow up email. Uh, currently, we are having an issue with our OneDrive at APH. Hopefully that will be fixed. This is a recorded webinar, so it will be posted where you will have that um, recording available to you and probably within about 48 hours, which would also give you this list. Elizabeth, what was the way to start a brand new presentation again? You can do it from with on, on the uh, main uh, slide screen. You can tab to create a new presentation button and you can press enter. Or if you're in a presentation, you can go to the file menu with alt and the letter F Foxtrot, press new for the new sub menu. And the first option there is presentation and you press enter on that option. Okay. When tabbing through the slide areas in film strip mode, can you use the right shift, the right click shift F10 to pull up relevant context menu? You can, and I was going to mention that as another, another thing as well. Yeah, you can, um, you, you can delete a slide from there. You can copy and paste. Uh, you can do new slides and duplicate slides and things like that. Okay. Um, can you explain how to increase font size? One way you can do that, let me see, I think this should work. Um, one good way to increase, you can also, you can do, let's see. Yeah, if you do control shift, if you hold that down and you press the period, that increases it by one point. If you hold that control and shift down and press comma, that decreases it by one point. Okay. What is the command for moving from the slide you are currently on to the one you want were before the, the slide previous? You can do page up, make sure you're not in selection mode, press escape and make sure you can do page up or if you go to the film strip, you can navigate through those as well. But yeah, page up goes to previous and page down goes to next. Okay. One person believes that a text box, text boxes also help the voiceover to read text in columns. Is that so text is not read line by line? I'm not sure about that. I need to play around with text boxes. Sometimes screen readers don't read text boxes well. Sometimes they do. So yeah, that, that may be. 
another person indicated to create a new slide presentation, they use a JAWS find command instead mm -hmm. of the multiple tabbing. You can, and I did find that to work probably 80% of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's another good way to do it though. That's a good command. Do you know how to jump ahead, such as from slide 11 to slide 32? Not, I'm sure there is a way, not specifically, you mean like a command that will allow you to type in a slide number? That's what I'm thinking. Do you I'm know a way? Sure. I don't know there a way. Be, I time. don't either. There might be though. I, I don't, I don't even know a way and I, I have to be. slide, I have to scroll with my mouse right. to get me moving fast. Um, in keyboard shortcut menu, control plus slash, mm -hmm. the list of keyboard shortcuts categories is on the left frame and a list yes. of sh specific shortcuts on the right. They can't get the JAWS to read the frame on the right. Um, if you press it, and then if I press, if I turn off the on the virtual PC cursor, let's see, and sometimes it'll turn it on for you. Um, if you tab... Yes, it will. It should read that. If you're having an issue with that, definitely send me an email and we can see if we can work through that. Send an email to training at vispero.com. You need to select text before using the formatting commands like bulleting and numbering. Yes, typically. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I you do. don't think you could use it for yeah. any other way. Yeah. Well, before uh, I, I give us the closing. Can I, I definitely want to take the time to say thank you, Elizabeth. This has been fabulous. We continue to need our JAWS updates. So thank you for having something so timely. Well, thank you guys for having me once again. Uh, if any of you guys missed anything or you, you have, you know, want some information, more information, send me an email to training at vispero.com. We'll be happy to answer your questions. And definitely check this out once it's archived and check that, uh, that handout out when it's available as well.